welcome to this uh, new episode of uh, unleashed this episode is all about institution building building companies with purpose moving away from the transaction focus moving away from short term focus to really building long term institutions one of my principles is always is to get associated with companies which are here to make a difference to the market contribute to the gap in the market versus those who are here only to end cash and opportunity for example many years ago when there was a huge shortage of power in this country the government opened up the power sector for private sector to invest and contribute so there were two types of companies who entered this one was those who want to really make a difference to the sector who want to contribute to the sector provide services provide access to better quality power and and then there was those who were already well doing companies diversifying into power sector as a short term focus to encash the opportunity so those ones who were coming to encash the opportunities were only looking at this sector as an opportunity while those who were entering for the long term purpose perspective of transforming power sector in the country were a different set of companies. so all the people we are speaking whether it's on healthcare side whether it is on uh, it side whether it is on telecom side how come there because of the passion for that area passion for contributing in that area making a difference to the customer excited by the trends in that side so it's all about passion of what impact you what you start a company because you want to create an impact in the market you start a company because you want to make a difference to your customers or start a company because you want to provide a product or a service which is useful to the customer makes the customer successful and the serendipity is that as we are preparing for this uh, podcast i got a post yesterday in linkedin from somebody who really uh, is cherishing my earlier book which is switch and switch again cherishes the same principles of being existing to make the customer win and therefore you win being in the market to create a difference to the market therefore you as a company succeed it cherishes those principles it cherishes those approaches to the market and it it wants to bring about that transformation in your approach to engaging with the customer in your approach to sell to the customer in your approach to really deliver value to the customer and how it talks about a win win approach it's like now i'm sitting back and reflect what did i write in it which still after many years people are finding this as something extremely useful to them extremely transformative to them in little aha moments to them a small excerpt from the introduction of switch i'm going to read out which inspired the rest of the concepts and frameworks i put together in switch here is it and it's relevant to this podcast over the years i had the opportunity to be associated in different capacities with several organizations small and large local and global from legacy to innovative startups many of them have been established with strong vision to make a difference to their customers and markets and have in their stable highly differentiated and extraordinary products however the pressures of meeting revenue and financial targets have forced many of them to shift their focus inward compromising on the larger objectives of the organization and vision of making a difference to the customers and markets executives co cards give undue weightage to financial parameters more so to near time financial goals and reduce weightages to parameters related to customer centricity corporate governance and disclosure needs do not demand explicit data on customer engagement satisfaction and delight financials are considered good enough indicators of these important parameters with the mindset of meeting targets at all costs approaches to the sale tend to be desperate aggressive and highly intrusive sales management continue to give precedence to efforts over effectiveness and to near term gains over long term gains and for the lack of success is prone to blame the sales person's efforts or lack of it sales can succeed only when it aligns with the larger vision of the organizations 
organizations are formed to address a specific market need the struggle is the result of moving away from the objective of making a difference to the customer and market needs so basically i was talking here about what is the purpose of a company the purpose of a company is to address in market need you have built fantastic products you have built fantastic solutions but you lose that purpose and you start getting short term focus so this episode is all about building that long term institution driven by a purpose in this episode we will will continue to reflect with krishan shibu we'll continue our discussions around purpose with raju venkatraman we will reflect with shiv and also we'll get perspectives from viber in building long term institutions when i talk to a lot of entrepreneurs especially there's a lot of family of course one of the things i see big difference is infosys always wanted to be an institution it always wanted to build a long term organization but a lot of companies including entrepreneurs in all kind of work have a lot more dominance about around the family reads versus the institution and therefore they are allowing new inputs into the company gets a little colored because of their own dominance of what they want to run the company from and a lot of entrepreneurs like that i think i'm just asking a slightly different question because you people as founders have come together to build an institution from a long term therefore always your approach has been institutional whereas some of these people have been more around certain individuals how they see what needs to be done and i'm sure there are a lot of companies which can benefit from your kind of so do you think that switch to building institution is must before any kind of a letting go and empowerment happens no it's we are all professionals we middle class lower middle class mm. and what we brought is our knowledge to the Correct. business Correct. and 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 the philosophy of wanting to be the best Correct. wanting to scale up grow wanting to bring other people in letting go build systems and processes i don't know whether we sat down and said you know we'll build it an institution because right. 40 years back you know india was very different you couldn't have imagined where we are today 40 years back so you will look at it in a period of 5 years and see what we want to do in 5 years correct and then once you reach there you say okay what will you do in the next 5 years and we had these strategy meets every year which allowed us to look at the next 5 years plan for the next 5 years which technology is going to come in what changes we need to make etc i think that is what institution building is all about so i don't one thing though uh, that wrongly uh, whether whether the weather it is purposeful or not we created this vision saying that we will be a globally respected corporation correct we may not have, there was i don't know how it happened it was there was no, i can't take any credit for that correct I don't think you. I don't think we, we. I don't think anybody can take any credit for that completely audacious word to write up forty years back. But I think over a period of time, some anchoring happened around that statement. That vision. Mm. That statement. So whenever it may be um, tacit or explicit, but I think that anchoring happened around that statement. See, uh, uh, Shini. I had done once an analysis on Infosys on these three dimensions: mm. global respect, cooperation. Okay. What does it mean to be? What does it mean to be global? And how does Infosys stand against that? Mm. And what does it mean to be respected? We have created dimensions. Okay. Okay. And cooperation. And then we were, of course, professionals. We were from different backgrounds, but similar value system. not a family owned organization mm-hmm. and we were very clear that it is not a family owned organization so i think some of those things allowed us luckily to let go so here there are two points coming chris talks about very practical tips of how to build long term institutions he talks about having five year plans every year so that at least the next five years you can work towards where you want to be and that bigger picture will help us to drive year after year in the right direction 
Shibu talks about a very different thing that they anchored around being a globally respected corporation and their entire actions were always benchmarked against the globally respected corporations and therefore they were able to always take that as a reference point in every decision they made in every way they build the organization and he clearly says that therefore when they were building from a longer term perspective like that their ability to let go was far more easier Raju Venkatraman, as we know, has built many organizations and purpose, as he had stated in earlier uh, episodes as well, uh, has, been, has been central to his way of building the organizations. We further talk here about purpose and building long-term institutions. So hmm. finding the purpose in my mind is the key hmm. for letting go. Absolutely. And your identity cannot be mixed up with the company. That's a very interesting point. Yeah, I think a lot of them see, I am the company. I am the company. So, you know, that level of detachment mm. that I have a purpose, I have done it. There will be more competent people to take it. So if I may I, just summarize, you're saying I have a purpose. The purpose is the bigger thing. In your case, you said, how do I bring more jobs to India? And then you started building an institution with a very clear milestones towards which you wanted to play a little bit. So building an institution was also a bigger part of this thing. My, my understanding from talking to different people on this and my own personal thing is that whoever succeeded more are people who wanted an institution beyond valuation, who wanted to create an impact in the market. The purpose was bigger, the purpose of what they're serving, like in your case, purpose of bringing jobs to India versus somebody saying purpose to probably create a world-class something. That purpose beyond the valuations, I think the more of those people have crossed the hump of out of the nine out of 10, I think the many of them are those people who have crossed the hump, succeeded as a value because what is promoted in the market is the valuations they got. Not necessarily the passion they have built beyond the valuations. Well said, well said. And the customer success stories, right? Absolutely. And that's, that means the customer success. Everything is an integral part of that. Right. They're also looking at exit of three years. They're not giving the right. runway. And they are not going to allow you. So you have to take the money with a very measured manner before you say, I take somebody's money. Absolutely. Because three years is not as easy to build value. Five years is possible, seven to ten years to get the full value. But if somebody wants a 3x and a 4x in three years, it's not impossible to get. But that shouldn't be the driving goal. Exactly. The driving goal to get the maturity index of the entrepreneur is very critical. Correct. They become too obsessed with either the product they are building, they won't invest in sales. Or they are too obsessed with marketing when the product is not even good. Yeah. And it doesn't have validations that are there. They were focusing so much on raising money and not spending enough time in the customers that are really... I want to get back to the basics. Your Absolutely. people, your team, your customers. That is the real business. Absolutely. 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 And I think that is the crux of the change we want to see. We want more and more people saying, I'm here to make a difference in the market. I'm here to probably address a customer need, a market need. And that's what I'm really there. I think institution building happens if the foundation is strong. Correct. Building superstructures are a lot easier than building the foundation. Correct. Correct. And entrepreneurs who focus that there is so many things to be put in place. Exactly. If they focus and if they are not under too much pressure on valuation alone. Correct. Correct. That hurry need not be there. I think what you have given as a foundation is very important. The purpose, building the right team, building the processes, building the governance in place, enabling, empowering through reviews. I think those are the foundations for anybody to learn from. And it's very useful for a lot of people if they learn from this. Raju Venkatraman gives phenomenal perspectives, very useful for all the young entrepreneurs, very useful for a lot of startups. Here is 
Shiv's perspective, being a startup, being rapidly growing startup, of his perspective around purpose, around building a long-term institution. Gives me job satisfaction. The part that really satisfies me is the ability to discover the correct problem and then get rally people around to solving that problem, which ultimately creates value. So this is the part that actually really gives me job satisfaction, and this is what I'm actually after. And I think that a money will come, but secondly, after a point, it doesn't matter. You called it passion. I'm calling it job satisfaction. If let us say that is in the right place, uh, if you're Tendulkar, then you want to hit four, not and get endorsement. So if so long as that's in the right place, then endorsements hopefully will come. Absolutely, I think the means will follow, the values will follow. All of us are here to contribute something, make some things better, and contribute something. I always tell people saying, "Are you waking up for what do you want from the world versus are you waking up who needs you today?" So it's a very big difference the way the attitude with you wake up during the day. Vibha Tiwari is working on post-hospital care, an area which is highly required in this country, probably more unorganized uh, than it is organized. Building a long-term institution requires a lot of patience, a lot of commitment. Uh, here are my reflections with Vibha on building a long-term institution around areas he is really working. There are so many wannabes have come in this space and they continue to come. But you seem to have gone through all the things, 10 years, and I think, of course, have a longer journey ahead. So you're really, truly building an institution. Yeah. And again, they struggle. Those entrepreneurs struggle to let go. Is it because their, their trade-offs are between building an institution, passion for something, because you came with a passion for something that there's a whole space missing? Versus somebody may be coming opportunistic that this is a space I want to grab and get returns out of it. Is that a difference with a lot of people are sinking today? Because it's a short term where I grab an opportunity versus long term I want to build a space in this. Actually, customer, end customer is my real goal. Yeah. Is that, I'm just trying to paint it slightly different here. Certainly, the way I look at it, I think especially a lot of founding teams and early stage teams, I think there's always a role of an owner and executive, right? So end of the day, part of an executive role will continuously get passed on to the newer and newer teams. You mm. still remain the owner, right? You are a shareholder in the company. Yeah. Or people have to distinguish between the two. I think a lot of people struggle and they can't distinguish between the two. So end of the day, if I get somebody smarter than me to run a certain function, I should be more than happy to hand it over because they will run it better than me. And as you rightly said, I cannot have all... I cannot have expertise in every area. So their letting go becomes very important. It's like you have to maximize value for yourself. And that's where you remain invested in saying what you need to do to create more value for the business. Yeah. So I think that transition has to happen over a period of time. No, but I'm also talking about a lot of people come for early exit. Yeah, that also is fair actually. So also this is an opportunity in this space, create some base and early exit versus you're really building an institution. Yeah, so, healthcare actually, so whether you like it or not, yeah. healthcare is very long gestation period. <laughs> Even yes. if you come saying, I'll do short term, you won't be doing short term. Correct. I think that's where when they come very short term, they're not letting go. Yeah. Because they are more to, let's say, how do I end cash? Yeah. Versus how do I build an institution? And that's the challenge I see. A lot of similar ones are coming, like what Portia is doing. But many, many coming, but not really taken up. Yeah. No, that's there. Of course, you have to be committed to the cause to be very mm -hmm. fair. It also probably comes with some experience, with more grey hair, I guess. But like I said, if you are not committed to the cause, it's like always mm -hmm. an issue. We, we talked about how purpose is central to building long-term institutions. I now shift to a very fascinating deliberations with Shiv, as well as with Chris and Shibu on the trade-offs between purpose and valuations. Here are my reflections with uh, Shiv. Are you building an institution? Typically, a lot of there's a trade-off between building for valuations and building for building a long-term institution. Where do you think your journey is at the moment? Where is the emphasis more? Nothing wrong in either of them, but I'm just saying which is the emphasis more. That's not the way I think about it. I think about it slightly differently. So I think of it as and maybe this is the letting go piece, right? So I have a job to do and I want to do the best that I can. And and I think that my job is influenced by three factors and it's like a constant tussle between those one is customer the other one is shareholders and the other one is employees mm. and so the demands of all of these people will keep on shifting the triangle in different different directions mm. and i try to balance all of this going forward what i do know is that this is the last thing i'm going to do in terms of commercial activity 
So mm-hmm. I have signed off my life for Exotel in that sense. But if the journey gets over next year, I'm happy to walk away. But if the journey is going to go on for the next hundred years, I'm going to be here and build it. So, uh, so maybe what I'm saying is that I am trying to build the company for the long term. Exactly. But my this quarter's work is influenced a lot by. where the noise is where the chaos is a lot so sometimes it could be for valuation sometimes it could be for profitability sometimes it could be for top line sometimes it could simply be for customers keeps on changing yeah. so exa- you answered my question in a, in a different way you're saying i'm really building a long term organization with every quarter having priorities where the trade offs would be but there is a direction because everything you talked about is we're building long term because we're looking at what is happening is that the reason you could let go more because you're really looking like you said earlier i'm working for the organization it's not working for me the moment you say valuations it becomes working for me why i'm asking this question is a lot of startups are caught in this trade off saying do i get an early valuations and exit versus do i build so you're really i think what really pleases me is the way you are building a, a organization which creates an impact in the market provides solutions to the market and you had this long run of consistently delivering and of course now really taking off in terms of doing this so you're really looking at building and so therefore the passion of the solution the passion of the market is what is driving you of course the financials discipline all those things are all there the valuations therefore follow i just don't feel like using my own company for as a crutch for my own objective so that is, that just does, doesn't seem right and if let's say valuation is what i want i also wear another hat as an investor uh, okay. public market investor angel investor whatever right. Right. so that's the role that i want to play and i want to maximize it there mm. whereas over here there is a certain other role that i'm playing which is more much more than founder much more than the largest shareholder what matters is that i am the chief executive yeah. and i have a job to do and the job is to basically make the company successful Wonderful. so i just don't feel the need to twist the company into serving my objectives very interesting because so i think i i got a lot of takeaways from our this things and a lot of lessons for young startups young entrepreneurs struggling at a different stage uh, you brought in a very different perspective because you you are a young entrepreneur which is now transforming itself building larger impact your lessons of being focused on the success of the company when the success of the company is the success of the market a passion for us providing solutions which were not there giving strategic advantage competitive advantage to your customers continuously and in that process obviously all of us make money and better valuations i think this is a lot of insights for people i think your own journey of how collaboratively you worked with people how you i think at some point realized that others are equally passionate about the company like you are and therefore the letting go happened we heard from shiv his perspectives around trade offs between valuations and building an institution let's get some reflections from chris and shibu around this aspect you deal with so many startups you deal with so many new generation businesses any thoughts of how your journeys can be now utilized by them because they they come very very passionately about the problem they are solving but they have to finally build a successful institution If you want to build an institution, really, it takes time, effort, resources, patience, commitment, willingness to go through up and down. If you want to create valuation, these are two different things. Exactly. One needs to be clear what you want to do. There is nothing wrong in doing whichever one you want. I mean, there is no judgment. Mm-hmm. Creating valuation is also a enormously successful task. You can create valuation. There is, of course, something to it, but. valuation and the organization the institution there is a, there can be a lack mm-hmm. right creating valuation may be bit faster than creating institution creating institution is definitely takes time and energy and commitment and creating valuation in private space, private market and in public market are two different things exactly in private markets a handful of people decide on the value because it's privately held you know few investors decide on the value mm-hmm. and full of investors decide on the value and if you are able to impress them if they want to see the value go up it's a 
it's actually a, a mutual admiration club right mm-hmm. the founder wants the valuation to go up the vc also wants the valuation to go up so the valuation goes up yeah in public markets is not like that there is a, a comparison with the peers on a second by second basis yeah and somebody is making a judgment independently and then there are analysts who are covering the company independently and your performance is tracked with your peers building valuation in public market is very different from building valuation in private markets very well said i think and I've and seen... that's the key difference mm. and many founders don't understand they have the art of building valuation in the private markets because you just go and meet some vcs and show a presentation and if you have a good story mm. of course backed by backed up by data and things like that you get your valuation and i think they are all looking for early exits rather than build an institution many of them yeah i know they may be wanting to build an institution but they don't understand the public markets public. infosys understood public markets because very early on we became a public company very very early correct ha huh. and so we had no choice but to meet the expectations about in fact infosys went public in order to use the share price as a competitive advantage not to raise money mm-hmm. we did not go public to raise money mm-hmm. we went to we went public because we want to use the public market as a competitive advantage versus our peers in the global markets so they did not understand the power later on they are they are public now and they are doing Correct. very well Correct. but then with our peers and the global peers yeah listing on nasdaq was to compete with them in the public markets mm-hmm. so we understood better than anybody else the power of public markets very well said and so that's why we were focused on co- corporate governance also the things. power of the power of benchmarking right because public markets will benchmark you with your peers yeah. automatically so it puts pressure on the standards have been raised Come. and the benchmark has been raised right because you are no more in your cocoon right you have to in the world right yes. so it is no different than going to cmm or something like that right because uh, yeah. it is to raise the bar for performance so it is quite an amazing insight about how to use public markets as a competitive advantage public markets to set the benchmarks to continuously raise the bar and become strategic advantage for you wow this is absolutely stunning information stunning insights from uh, both chris and shibu the first part of talk with chris and shibu is all about referring back to the purpose how that purpose said or unsaid always guided them to build a world class organization how the long term thing always help them to continuously build at least longer term perspective plans and strategies and get driven by them so always they kept the bigger picture in mind while they still focused on the shorter terms so i think the lesson from all they are talking is how to keep the shorter term focus intact how to keep the shorter term results delivered while keeping the longer term in focus if that balance is maintained then the institution is built they also later on talk about valuations and and institution building go hand in hand but there are lessons to be learned that building institution requires patience perseverance and building it from a long term perspective there is a reflection at least in this that the valuations which come from closed door of set up people may not take into account the what infosys talked about going public early and getting benchmarks and parameters set from outside so that they raise the standards to deliver much much better performance and therefore was always designed to be a longer term organization so these are the fascinating perspectives and shiv in his talk always talked about that he wears a hat of a ceo to help the purpose of the company derive and his investor hat is a separate one his investor hat is a separate one but he works from the perspective of 
putting the purpose of the company as most priority and he wears that role and he says if this is my last job even if it takes many years i'll be there or even if it is short term but the purpose is to make the company reach the goals it was started for deliver the impact it is started raju venkatraman perspectives from building multiple corporations over the years of you know driving it from purpose building the foundations very strongly working for the markets working for the customers are going to go a long way in helping every entrepreneur every new startup to build a better more successful organization vibha tiwari clearly talks about how it is not possible in healthcare sector to have a short term view of only and cashing the opportunity he very clearly talks about that in healthcare it's a very long drawn committed and passionate approach to building an institution so between the institutional long term institutional building versus the short term goals how do you balance the trade off so i'm not saying ignore the short term but is the long term getting compromised in the process the simon senex's uh, why versus how versus what as long as companies are driven by the why and the how and what are derived from the why the success is absolutely derived if the companies are driven by what the end result and tend to miss the why they will have short term successes but may or may not really deliver the purpose for which they were set up so the trade off is do you want immediate short term successes or would you want to really build long term successful organizations it is for you to reflect upon and i think you as a leader you as a, a entrepreneur you as a founder can only let go when you build long term organizations when your purpose is to only make short term returns i think letting go becomes a lot more challenging